Let's look at uh, the alternative forms of the Fourier series. I have uh, two different alternative forms, and the text included only one. And the um, the one including the text is that f t in the Fourier series is equal to a zero still AC component, uh, still the the DC component plus instead of having a n and b in the cosine and the sine term are different, and you can combine them together. And using a sub n times the cosine n omega t, now we have the amplitude and the facing angle theta sub n. And in this one here, we have n goes from zero uh, from one to infinity. Now a n is the amplitude. Is the amplitude of the nth order harmonics or nth order? AC term and theta sub a is the face angle is the face angle of the nth order AC terms. Okay, and apparently a a and b a you can use uh, the trigger identity to find that. I think it's it's more convenient if we relate this uh, using the phasors. Right, the a a is just magnitude of that phasor for a sub a minus j b sub a, because the cosine a omega t will replace correspond to the phasor of uh, the magnitude, and the sine function will correspond to the phasor of minus j, the phase angle. Right. So therefore, we have um, the a n just the amplitude of this, and the theta a n is going to be the angle of this a n minus j b a. Okay. So that's for the uh, the alternative form that's included in the text. I think another very important, very useful alternative form is the complex form. The complex form. The complex Fourier series. And the complex Fourier series is really important if, especially if you want to prove something, this is really much more compact um, compared to the uh, the real numbers. In complex form, the f t in the Fourier series for f t is going to be equal to the sum of let's use the Fourier coefficients. Complex uses c sub n times e to j n omega t. And the in this one here, a is going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. So this includes all the for the uh, coefficient, including the DC component. And the CN is is the complex Fourier coefficients. CN the way we find CN is going to be equal to uh, the um, 1 over t times the integration of t times e2 minus j and omega t dt. And this proof, this is very straightforward. And if just to do a quick proof on this, and if we do the 0 to t f t times e2 minus j and omega t dt, and we replace f by, we replace f by Sigma now we change that to k so that we don't get ourselves confused with this n here. So we have a negative uh, infinity to infinity, and we have e2, um, and we have c sub k, c sub k times e2 uh, j k uh, omega t, and times, and this is f t, right, times e2 minus j a omega t. As you can see, when only when um, k is equal to n, and then we have that uh, constant term. All others will be we have e to j something, and that will integrate um, over a fundamental period that will be zero. So this one here that's going to be equal to t times c n. That's all we have, and therefore the c n will have the c n is equal to this form. The, the proof of this is almost trivial. Um, and so this is the complex form. We're going to look at an example of use how we're going to solve the um, for complex Fourier coefficient, although that's a little bit of 
um, above the requirement for undergraduate course. So I'm gonna read, uh, make the next video clip as optional for you as extra credit for those who are taking the class this semester. Okay, I'll see you in the next video clip.